uh, IP Global, of course, uh, and your leadership, you know, you have, you're involved in some of uh, the projects that change impact lives, you know, the people at the bottom of the society, even in India, in, in, in other countries, in Asia, I and mean, in Africa. Now, COVID has brought such hardship on the, uh, the bot people at the bottom of society, people at the labor, migrant. How do you look at such issues? What government should do to ease their pain, you know, uh, because there is a fiscal uh, constraint, of course. There is another uh, aspect of not everybody has a uh, account, a PMJ account, which uh, money can be transferred. But uh, what is the solution you offer in this uh, scenario? You see here again, I, I, I go back to my original statement that it is important first to, to save lives and then to revive the economy. And saving lives is not only from, from uh, COVID, but also from hunger. Uh, and, and the biggest and immediate fallout of uh, some of the lockdown decisions taken by the government was really the fact that, that uh, you know, this whole stream of people who are either already below the poverty line or who had just over the last uh, couple of years, you know, in India signed up to the, the sustainable development goals and, and we had seen close to about 200 million people who moved out of the poverty, uh, below poverty line over the last few years. The fear is now that there's most of those people and maybe more will, will get into the BPL. Uh, now there was, uh, I, I would say that the government did most things right uh, when it came to uh, announcing the lockdown, but perhaps one area where they could have done a lot more was in the area of the migrant labor. I think that is where uh, everybody was uh, caught unaware of the total extent. I wouldn't say unaware, but maybe in adequate planning had not been done at the extent of the migrant labor that was there. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, even though the, uh, the government did uh, go in with some direct benefit transfer and, and, and cash transfers to their account, not mo uh, all of them had the, the uh, you know, the, uh, bank accounts open under the uh, Danjan Yojana. Or, uh, so a lot of them, especially the migrant label, did not get the benefit of, of the funding. Uh, there again, I, a, a lot of NGOs did come forward to try and, 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 and provide the food and welfare to them. But you still have this challenge of being able to transport people back. And that is where uh, a lot happened. So if I was to really look forward to what the government needs to do, I think the government needs to continue the, the direct benefit transfer. Uh, these cash transfers are a must. And that is something which is going to continue to, to, to be around. We will need to have uh, major cash transfers over the next uh, at least over the next year or so. That's something that is very, very important for the very survival. Uh, the government has already announced the, the, the start of uh, trains back to uh, some of these places. So I will see, I do imagine a lot of um, uh, movement of, of migrant labor back uh, into their, their villages. Uh, a lot of people are already talking about going that because, because uh, COVID is, is probably more prevalent in urban cities and, and people feel safer going back into rural parts of India. The government will need to come up with huge centrally sponsored schemes to give them some livelihood because getting them back and transferring some money to them is one part of the story. But then comes the story of being able to uh, infuse some, some cash flow into the system to, uh, to, to, to create some kind of livelihood. We saw in the past that one of the most successful schemes of the government was uh, uh, Narega, uh, the Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme. The government would need to probably allocate more funds for Narega and help recreate uh, more infrastructure uh, at, 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 at local level to be able to A, create infrastructure and B, at the same time, create uh, livelihood. Uh, they, will, they, will, they will need to uh, encourage, uh, infuse some funding into the MSME sector because uh, a, a very major chunk of, of uh, uh, even the rural uh, business is in the form of uh, MSME. Uh, they will need to uh, boost up the mudra loans as well. And, and uh, frankly, the mudra loans might end up having been written off. But that's, uh, that is a way that they will need to try and uh, revive the MSME sector. Uh, I do not see the, the, the jobs of the migrant labor coming back very quickly because uh, most of the industries uh, that we have uh, had uh, anything from 51% to about 68, 69 percent of the labor was migrant labor. Now, the fact that most of the labor has gone back uh, or will be going back to their uh, uh, villages, uh, I don't think they're going to be coming back in a rush because A, there's going to be a huge 
uh, drop in demand of labor to start with. And B, till the time uh, coronavirus really settles in, they are also going to be feeling very insecure about coming back. Uh, you know, I, 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 I see a lot of challenges, especially in the construction sector, because nearly two thirds of the, the total uh, workforce uh, was coming in from uh, uh, migrant labor. So now that's going to be facing a challenge. So these are, these are challenges the government will need to face. And uh, government has to infuse money into the system. It's very easy saying that, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, private sector should continue paying wages to their uh, employees. But where is the private sector? You can pay wages for one month, two months, maybe three months. But where is the private sector really going to be getting that funding from? Uh, one of my very sort of, uh, uh, there's something that others have also said, but one of the, the first things that India needs to do is to, to make sure that the biggest buyers of goods and services is the government. It is important for the government to start clearing its its debt, uh, start putting system. And, 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 you know, government is announcing schemes like, you defer your GST, you defer your income tax, you, you, we'll give you uh, bank loans as well. But how are the MSMEs and the private sector going to be repaying the money? Defer deferment is not a solution. The solution is to give them money, especially if it is money that is owed to them. Uh, the government has a, a huge liability towards private sector, be it be it uh, for, for uh, construction activities, be it for infrastructure, be it for goods, be it for services uh, the government needs to clear those uh, clear those uh, debts they can get a, they can get an undertaking from these companies uh, or or entities that they will use this money primarily to pay wages of their 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 employees i'm i'm sure they'll be happy to do that the other uh, thing that uh, the government might consider doing and, and we are hoping for a a, a a stimulus package very soon uh, if you look at what some of the western countries have done uk for instance uh, has has announced uh, that, that they will uh, pay up to 80% of the salary uh, up to a particular limit, uh, which is, you know, they, in their case, I think it was 3,000 uh, pounds. Uh, anybody who was drawing salary up to this amount, if the employer is unable to pay that salary, the government was willing to underwrite 80% of that salary. So that ensured that there were no uh, job losses or a disruption in paying, uh, paying of salary. Similarly, uh, certain, uh, you know, waiver on, on, on loans, uh, a, a lot of landlords have are facing problem in their cash flow because uh, the the tenants are unable to pay them rent. The government uh, of UK has stepped in and also said that we will pay the rent for a particular number of uh, months if if we can uh, see that's happening. The the US government, in fact, uh, has been giving uh, for anybody who has lost his job during coronavirus or 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 even uh, before that. Uh, the U.S. government has been giving them uh, $1,200 a month for that, which is a, nearly a lack of rupees has been given there. But of course, those economies are different. They have more funds and their cost of living is higher. But the government needs to immediately start looking at ways of pumping money into the, the system and, and making sure that it reaches the last uh, mile, which is reaches these uh, you know, migrant labor and, and, and people who are in villages. Uh, Ashujit, of course, you know, you pointed uh, some of the challenges. I think challenges are far, far greater for the government. But if there is any silver lining, uh, if we see during the COVID, uh, in the sector of agriculture, uh, I, uh, we know that this year we have a bumper crop across Punjab, Haryana, and, and also uh, other places in Bihar and UP as well. Uh, uh, you know, the vital question is that agriculture has always been neglected. It is, it is a sector which absorbs maximum number of workforce of India. Is it a time to make some uh, big giant uh, reform within agriculture? Because the migrants who have gone back to their uh, native places across uh, other parts of India, uh, they can be engaged uh, in meaningfully uh, into agriculture. How do you look at uh, such a proposition and opportunity to, to make agriculture um, a sort of a viable industry during the COVID, if there is any silver lining we talk about, you know. Uh... No, ab absolutely. I, I think, uh, uh, Manish, if you, if you go back a few years or a few decades in India, India, India was largely an agriculture-based economy, uh, where we had nearly about, uh, you know, um, uh, 70 to 75 percent of uh, the total uh, contribution to GDP was really uh, coming from agriculture. It is only over the last few decades that India moved from an agriculture in economy to a higher or a high shake, a share coming in from uh, the services sector as well as manufacturing. So to me, they are, they are, you know, when we talk about 
opportunities or the silver lining between uh, uh, after uh, COVID. Agriculture reforms is definitely one of them because as I had earlier mentioned, uh, a lot of labor which earlier was, was working in industry and, 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 and uh, construction activities, till such time these economies or these industries really recover, is, is available and will go back to agriculture. So they will, uh, we need to uh, invest more in agriculture as a nature, come up with, with, with uh, more technology and, 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 and better uh, research around the higher yield of agriculture as well, because we, I do imagine that to be a major mainstay in the next couple of years. The second thing that we need to really uh, look at is also to try, and this is the right time for India to actually come up with the reforms of the kind that we had in the early 1990s to try and attract foreign uh, direct investment into India because uh, we do imagine that there will be a huge loss of uh, uh, manufacturing. A lot of companies, uh, global companies are already looking at moving out of China uh, as far as manuf manufacturing is concerned. Now, this is a golden opportunity for India because uh, we are not the only alternate that they have. They have alternates in the form of it could be Indonesia, it could be Vietnam, it could be Philippines, it could be, you know, some of the other Southeast uh, Asian economies. So India needs to move fast and, and provide incentives and create manufacturing hubs so that uh, we are able to attract some of, some of these investments in India. And hopefully that will create more jobs that will make us more uh, competitive and will eventually move towards reviving our economy. Yeah, so and uh, one of the important question, how you are managing IP Global? What are your, how your development project across the world? Uh, what is that position? Of, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the status now, uh, your financial situation? Could you talk about your entity? Yeah, sure. Uh, you see, as far as we are concerned, we are an advisory uh, or a consulting company which works in this entire space of uh, public health, uh, urban reforms, social economic empowerment, uh, uh, governance, education. So a lot of what is happening is actually impacting, uh, you know, the social sector uh, hugely. Uh, we have uh, uh, very quickly adapted. First of all, uh, we had announced a work from home in our office even one week before the prime minister actually announced the official lockdown. So we had actually planned for this work from home. We were not taken by surprise on a Tuesday evening that from Wednesday you cannot go to office or you should not be going to office and there's a lockdown. We'd actually already uh, created mechanisms of, of weekly uh, reporting, uh, monthly meetings, reviewed mechanisms uh, for our staff. And all our staff had been told to carry their laptops and chargers and whatever else documents that required to work from home. We are now uh, managing by, by, in fact, uh, some of us are actually working harder than we were working during the, the regular days. Uh, we are managing from uh, through, through Zooms and Skypes and um, uh, Blue Jeans uh, and having regular meetings uh, with, 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 with work plans. But more important is that we have been able to quickly adapt and move towards work that is required uh, to be done uh, as part of coronavirus as well. Uh, and, and that comes partly by us and, and partly because all our donors or our clients, be it the USA, the DFID, UNICEF, uh, World Bank, they're all moving towards the current focus is to see how we can work towards uh, uh, COVID. So some of our state teams, which have been working in the urban reforms or smart city space, have actually been asked by the state governments to, to help in, uh, you know, whether it's creating help decks, whether it, it, is, it, it is trying to, uh, you know, review some hospitals for preparedness, etc. So uh, that's already being done by us at the state level. And at the national level, we've got a couple of programs, including uh, one on innovative financing by USAID, where the US government has actually um, tied up with the NHA, the National Health Authority, which uh, today, as you know, runs the, the insurance scheme uh, and has 20,000 hospitals across. So we are creating a, a blended and we are, we are the technical agency that's been asked to, to work in that area. So we are creating a, a, a blended finance facility where we are really going to be uh, uh, raising money both in the form of grants and, and uh, loans uh, uh, to be available as equity or grants to innovative uh, uh, you know, uh, ideas which help fight 
uh, coronavirus as well as other communicable diseases. So that's something we've already started. Uh, even under a Norwegian uh, program, NIPI, uh, as well as other programs, we are, we are working with certain state governments in trying to uh, tackle coronavirus. So as of now, we are busy. We are, in fact, uh, some of our teams are more busy. But uh, I, uh, we will, in due course, uh, see how we want to go back into office. This might even change our ways of working forever. Uh, but we are committed to working in this space, and we will continue doing so. That is great, Ashujit. Uh, thank you so much uh, for talking on such a critical issue in the time of COVID. Thank you so much for talking with Business World. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Manish. Thanks a lot, and uh, stay safe. All the best. Thank you.